our starry sky deceives us. Four out of five stars you see from Earth are, in fact, binary star systems. There are also triple systems, but binary ones are the most common in the universe. So, in theory, Earth had a better chance of ending up in a binary solar system. However, it's infrequent that such systems have planets, and it's pretty dangerous to live in an unstable world like this. But what if we try? In this video, you'll find out how can we turn our Jupiter into a star. If we do, will it bring unbearable heat or instead permafrost to Earth? And will we manage to survive if a star appears in the Sun's orbit? How can we make our solar system binary? Right now, there's already a worthy candidate for the star. Jupiter is 318 times heavier than Earth. At the same time, its chemistry is mainly identical to that of the Sun, as both are made up of hydrogen and helium. But the gas giant is still not big enough to make nuclear fusion occur and light itself up like a star. So, how much extra mass does it need? A lot more than our solar system can offer. Even if we make 50 Jupiters collide at once, all we'll get is a dull brown dwarf. It's more than a planet, but still less than a star. To get even the smallest of stars, we'll have to make at least 80 Jupiters crash into each other. Currently, there's no celestial body that weighs this much. However, astronomers calculated that if the protoplanetary disk that coalesced into our solar system had been around 20 times more massive, Jupiter could possibly have become a red dwarf. There wouldn't be any giant planets in a solar system like that, but there would be enough material for Earth and its neighbors. But if a second star did appear, it would undoubtedly have some grim consequences for us. What would happen to Earth if it got into a binary system with a red dwarf instead of Jupiter? First things first, we'd have to rewrite astronomy books. Major moons of Jupiter, for instance Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto would be regarded as planets, and rightly so since Ganymede is larger than Mercury. A second planetary system would form behind the asteroid belt. Buy one, get one free. But what would be the actual price we'd have to pay if Earth suddenly moved to this lively place? A typical red dwarf shines 300 times dimmer than the Sun. If it replaced Jupiter, the distance between us and its orbit would be four times longer than between the Sun and us. And still, we'd see a small, bright star up in the night sky, and it'd be even brighter than the full moon. Our planet would receive some additional heat, although not too much of it. But having another star nearby means not only an additional source of light, but also a gravitational force. The red dwarf would pull orbits of its closest solar neighbors, Mars and Earth. The climate on our planet would become much colder, and that's when we'd need to get that extra heat coming from the red dwarf. We'd be able to forget about global warming once and for all, that's for sure. And yet, living on Earth with the red dwarf instead of Jupiter would be much more dangerous. The second star would destabilize the asteroid belt and regularly throw rocks at Earth. And perhaps it would be happening so often that weather forecasts would need a new table informing about meteor showers, their victims, and destroyed properties. And I'm speaking only about small rocks here. As for asteroids like the one that killed the dinosaurs, they'd visit us not once every 100 million years, but only once every several million years. Under this bombardment, life on our planet could have never reached its current stage of development and created the world as we know it. Most likely, there would have been nobody to gaze at the red dot in the sky at all. But 
That's not the only variant of a binary solar system. Astronomers believe that the Sun formed in an area with a large population of stars, and it's referred to as the Beehive Cluster. But actually, strong gravitational perturbations were pretty quick to banish our young star from its home district. But what if a certain friend joined it on its way? Would Earth survive if the Sun had a massive sidekick? It's not science fiction, and you'll see that if you look at our closest neighbors. In the Alpha Centauri system, there's a duo of stars similar to the Sun circling together, and we strongly suspect that both of them have a planet. If we copy-pasted this template to our own system, the second star would replace Uranus. At this distance, Sun number 2 would affect us in much the same way as the red dwarf in Jupiter's orbit. Moreover, gravitational perturbations and regular asteroid bombing would still be there as well. And if we replaced Jupiter with the second Sun, Earth would be in real trouble. Even though the radiation coming from the neighboring star would be 20 times less strong than that of the Sun, it'd still be enough to upset the balance of our planet's climate. Alongside the orbit changes caused by the second Sun, that would turn Earth into a hellish, scorching desert. Another Venus. But if the partner star were two times as massive as the Sun, like Sirius, then I'm afraid we'd be done for. Such a massive star would quickly snatch Earth away from the Sun and make it its own planet. Without even asking us, how dare it? Not to mention that it'd be hazardous, as a blue giant like Sirius is 20 times more active and brighter. It'd destroy Earth's atmosphere in a flash, as well as its soil and oceans, and would turn it into Mercury. If strong gravitational perturbations distorted orbits, that could let the second star spit us out into interstellar space, after it turned Earth into a well-done stake, and its remnants would turn into popsicles. But what if we made the second star take it easy? Would Earth survive if this star were a lot less bright? Scientists know such exotic objects quite well. Our solar system could be visited by a stellar corpse, also known as a white dwarf. We wouldn't even notice the faint light coming from this celestial body no bigger than Earth. There's a catch, though. White dwarfs often become vampires. Despite their tiny size, they can be considerably heavier than the Sun. Astronomers have repeatedly seen a dense, massive white dwarf suck in its partner star's heated plasma. If the Earth crossed its hot funnel, it'd fall prey to the vampire and vanish without a trace. Within our solar system, there's another exotic star having an even greater talent for being invisible. This is a neutron star. It's smaller than a white dwarf, but way denser and heavier. Even if placed far away from the sun, a neutron star would bathe Earth in X-rays. Such powerful radiant flux would kill all kinds of life on our planet. And now to the third variant that I'm sure you've been waiting for. There are several known binary systems that exist in our galaxy and have black holes. Living side by side with this gravitational fellow, Earth would gradually fall apart because of tidal forces, like Spider-Man faded from Thanos' snap. So, it seems that all the theories about the second star in our solar system don't bode well for our future. Or do they? Our plan to safely replace Jupiter with a star has failed. So we'll have to make Earth circumbinary, or simply put, a planet orbiting two stars simultaneously. Like a gas giant that lies in the Kepler-47 planetary system, it revolves around a duo of a solar-type star and a red dwarf and in the habitable zone, by the way. So, to really protect Earth from the quirks of a binary system, I suggest we make it a satellite of this Jupiter. How does that sound?
Of course, it'd be a lot peachier to relocate to the Kepler-64 system, where a planet revolves around a similar pair of stars while they, in turn, do the same and move around another pair. That's a unique quadruple star system. Suits us well, but we'd need to think of nice names for all four suns. Leave a comment and offer your ideas.